What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Winter Season Showdowns, where you're currently watching a best of five between EG's Idra and Root's Minigun. Before we get into game number three, where Minigun is currently up two to zero, Full Sail University, if you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're looking for the next step education-wise in your life, if you're looking to get involved with the gaming industry, uh, graphic design, video production, audio engineering, check out fullsail.edu slash MLG. It might be the perfect fit for you. If you visit that website, they'll have you fill in some information and then send some information right back at you. And you can find out if it's the proper fit for you, of course. Full Sail is the official education partner of MLG. That being said, Let's go ahead and get into game number three of this best of five between spawning in the bottom left hand location. Currently down two to zero, must win three games in a row to qualify for the championship event in Dallas, Texas on March 15th. He is Idra from Team Evil Geniuses. His opponent in the top right hand location, again, the man of many middle names. From Team Root Gaming, he is the blue Protoss player one win away from qualifying for the championship event. He is Minigun. This is a spot here. It's your down 0-2, where you've got to be wondering, how's his mental state going? Is he frustrated? He lost that first game to, you know, uh, just a, a very, you know, aggressively macroing up Minigun that hit that, you know, the DTs and, and then that really nice uh, soccer timing. The game too, I mean, he was he was significantly ahead when he stopped that that two base immortal. But then, you know, it, it's like a tortoise and a hare. Even if you're ahead in the race, you can't fall asleep. You've got to keep playing your best game. You've got to keep your tactics solid, or else they can still catch up and, and pass you. And that's what happened. And, and that's a very frustrating thing to occur. Idris got to find a way to bounce back and take this this game here because if he loses this, it's over. Yep, it's over. Um... You know, of, of course, these, these players have both been playing a ridiculous amount of Heart of the Swarm, potentially in preparation for this match. So they can get that spot at the Winter Championship event, all expenses paid, to join the other top players in the world at the first Heart of the Swarm exhibition tournament uh, since the game's release, I guess after the game's release. So a lot is on the line here. Very important match for both of these two players. I thought Israel played that last game very, very well. Uh, to a certain point, you know, able to identify the two base push, able to get out the appropriate units to deal with that, able to position his army correctly. But again, it came down to Minigun with the uh, the hidden transition into those Colossi. And then, of course, distracting his opponent with the War Prism while attacking, while getting his army into that key position where it's very difficult for a Zerg player to deal with. Both very key aspects of Minigun's victory there. Uh, that's a sign of a really strong player. You know, they're behind. But they say, you know what, if, if a couple things go my way, if he makes a couple mistakes and I do this type of thing, I can still win the game. So Minigun identified the way he could come back and win the game. He executed the build, and, and it worked. It worked. All right. So if I'm Idris coach, I'm telling him, you know what, man? You're fine. You played that last game really well. It's just these distract and ta uh, distraction tactics from Minigun that are, that are really working well. You know, the DTs in game one. Um, the War Prism in game two. So if I were a reviewer, I would not count Idra out by any means. Very good player, very capable of winning three in a row here. But we'll have to see uh, what Minigun does, because I feel like it's, it's up to Minigun here. Not only because he's the Protoss player, but because he's up two to zero. I mean, obviously, usually the Zerg player is the reactive race in PvZ, uh, especially considering Idra's playstyle. So I'm interested to see what kind of build order Minigun is going to elect to go for and how well Idra can identify that and uh, react to it. I would not at all be surprised to see a, a fast third here in Daybreak. Uh, it's a great map for fast third by a Protoss player. But, you know, uh, you're playing against Idra, you've got three games more, right? Even if you lose this one, you still got two more. So, you know, maybe we do something like a two base, very fast DT rush. Maybe do some like two Stargate play. I mean, y there's there's so many things you can throw at them. Uh, you know, it, it, it's possible to think, okay, one of these will work eventually, right? Uh, Minigun, though, I, I think he's... I don't think we're going to see anything too crazy from him. He's got his, his set of solid builds, and he's like, I'm up 2-0 using the builds I love, the builds I'm good at, my, my style. Let's just keep doing that, close him out. Looks like he's going to go for a similar push as the previous two games for you, Protoss Heart of the Swarmers at home, taking notes about potential build orders to use against her. Involves an early Zealot, Stalker, and a Mothership Core. Of course, the goal being, let's 
force my opponent to make some units instead of drones, which is a you know a key aspect to PvZ throughout the early uh, to mid game. Of course, the important thing here is not to lose the Stalker. I mean, you can lose the Zealot, that's fine, as long as you get some kills. But losing the Stalker is pretty huge. It's a very important unit of the early game PvZ. And of course, you have that Militia Core there. Of course, if we're observing um, Zerg units that can actually deal with the Militia Core at this stage, probably only Queen. So your Militia Core is also going to be your VIP. So let's see how much damage Manigla can do here and how many units he can force out of his opponent. It just got two Queens to death third. That's more than enough to scare Minigun into backing away. Of course, if you walk on the creep, the Zergings can surround a Zealot very easily. And if they got Queens to push away that Mothership Core, you're not going to get a good trade. So Minigun's looking for a different angle, but still doesn't want to commit too far into creep, where the Zerg has advantage with that Queen support. Minigun setting up his third base as we speak. Idra has not yet identified this. Has an Overlord very close to seeing that that's happening. The Zergling's going to end up surrounding the Zealot at the middle of the map layer on the way here from Idra. Nothing but drones and speed just now beginning. I think Minigun is going to get this third up without too much trouble at all. I mean, he, he definitely is. Uh, Idra, of course, is, is I think is aware of this, even though he's just now scouted Nexus. Earlier, uh, when he poked us over into match, we saw the gas timings, which uh, either means to warp get all in or or a, a fast third and not seeing warp get all in. He, he's now figured it out. The question is, what's he going to do from here? Already getting that range upgrade uh, and a second evolution chamber. Maybe he's just wow. going to might just try to swarm Minigun over with waves of roaches and hydras. We saw Stefano do this tactic against Titan on this map, and it was very effective in that case. Perfect overlord scout here from Idra. Going to be able to scout both the Twilight Council and the robotics facility. Idra knows his timings. And now he's going to have a good idea of what his opponent is up to. Of course, the Twilight Council leading to, uh, of course, the plus two continuation of the Forge. And Idra now has to be wary of potential Dark Templar play, of potential Blink Stalker play. Minigun adding on four more gateways. So he's going to have six. I can hit the Structures tab, a new feature in Heart of the Swarm, and see that he has three Warp Gates right now and four in production. So he's going to have seven Warp Gates on the field. Minigun using a little bit of hallucinated Phoenix scouting, trying to figure out what Idra is up to, but Idra hasn't really tipped his hand yet. Just constant drone production. Now we see six overlords in the production queue. Once those finish, that's going to be uh, basically signal the start of a massive swell of Zerg production. Roach is in Hydratus. He's got overlord speed, uh, Hydratus range, road speed, 1-1. One, one. A lot of these upgrades coming as those finish. That's when he's going to start launching his, his aggression towards Minigun. War Prism being sent across the map here. Idra making an Overseer at his, uh, uh, just above his opponent's main base. So we're going to send that in to scout fairly soon. Minigun trying to be aggressive here. Wow. That's, Where's the Mothership seven gate, he has, he has seven uh, Warp Gates worth of production. Is Idra prepared for this? Six Hydras in production here. The Hatchery trying to get finished here at this fourth base. There's a Queen there. The Creep is not too far along. So Minigun coming forward. And as you said before, there's the Mothership Core coming in from the back. Keep it on. Minigun can recall at any moment. Just going to try to deny this fourth and potentially back away. Idra trying to scramble to make as many units as possible to deal with this, but it looks like he will have to cancel that fourth. Definitely going to cancel the fourth. The recall goes down. One Protoss unit dying, but a nice move by Minigun. The timing there was perfect. If it was about 10 seconds later, the Hydras would have been out. They would have pushed that attack back, maybe killed a couple units before the recall could have gone off, gotten off. But as is, delaying that fourth for about two minutes, or almost two minutes, a very big win for Minigun. Idra is going to proceed straight up to Hive Tech, continuing his upgrades, perhaps looking to use Vipers in conjunction with Hydratus to hit a really strong timing. The Overseer uh, did scout his opponent's main base during that. I'm trying to see if he's... Yeah. Oh, he did not spot the Robotics Bay. Uh, but he is going into Viper production, which, which is pretty much the proper response against those Colossi. Typically, of course, you can use that Viper. You know, of course, you need the Hive to get the Vipers. Viper have, have an ability called the Abduct, which you can grab the Colossi into your Roach Hydra Death Ball, and that's how you kill those. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Idra has plus two missile on the way. Zelda's trying to deny the space. The top, are they going to be successful? Nope, going to back away for now. But that Warp Prison might be annoying for a little bit longer. It's definitely going to try to keep Idra on Idra's side of the map. Of course, Minigun wants that time to build up that giant Protoss Death Ball. Uh, but Idra, once he gets those Vipers, he can do so much on the offensive angle because uh, normally the way you defend attacks is you by set up a concave and force them to come into a poor area. But if you use Blinding Cloud, you can force them yes. to give up that concave because they, of course, can't fight underneath that Blinding Cloud. So I think when the Vipers come out, Idra will have a lot of offensive options at his uh, disposal. Prioritizing the gas at this fourth base, of course, that's very important as, uh, Zerg as it gets later game. That gas is so oh. important, especially for the Zerg. Gotta be careful that war prism. Those hydras almost took it out there, but just 
Just take the shields down. We're presumably able to get barely away. One Zelda, of course, didn't make it back in. It but the distraction. Idra has to be careful. This is what uh, killed him in the last game, being too worried about the, the war prism and then unable to defend other bases. Idra might end up losing this fourth. Vinny get charging forward with the Stalker and the Claws. They're going to back away a little bit here, uh, dropping some units at the, uh, the third base there of Idra. The war prism getting taken out. But can Idra deal with this massive Stalker Colossus ball? He's going to have to give the fourth. He needs those Vipers out in the field. Now they're just getting the energy. He kept the drones alive. He kept the drones alive. And they can transfer. He still is on four bases. Yes. Right? So uh, he still has the economic advantage. His Vipers are now getting energy using those extra evolution chambers he's built kind of outside of his natural. And once he gets a lot of Viper energy, then he can engage. But he still wants to battle before Storm comes into play. Vipers can equalize. Uh, and, and make the Roach Hydra able to deal with a Stalker, Colossi, Sentry Death Ball. But once that Storm comes into play, you want to hit before that or add in your next level attack. Maybe the Ultratus, maybe uh, the Swarm Host. But uh, the Roach Hydra Fiber Composition, you really want to strike before Storm gets out. Another War Prism on the way here for Minigun. He, re he recognizes how important that tactic has become in this series, and he's going to continue with that harassment. We have plus three missile attacks on the way here from Idra. Really prioritizing those upgrades. Also adding on the plus one melee attack, so potentially setting up for an Ultralist transition. And there is the Ultralist Cavern just now on the way. That might be a great transition for him indeed. Hydra's going to try to pursue this, this War Prism, but he's going to get away and Minigun able to set up this fourth base, adding on some cannons to protect that, adding on those oh-so-important High Templar storms could be instrumental in this upcoming engagement. Idra is maxed. Minigun not quite there yet. Idra wants an engagement. He does, but he's coming in from only one direction. Oh. Feedbacks go off. Feedbacks go off, but oh, two Colossi running. able to get yanked in there. One getting away, though. The High Templar getting some awesome feedbacks in. Archon's being made. Roaches and Hydras might start getting... Uh, destroyed here by Minigun. Here. Yeah, Idra losing those Vipers was so instrumental in the early portion there. It really was. The abducts were great, but he needed one or two blinding cows to supplement them. As is, though, uh, you know, he lost the Merchants and Hydras, but Idra has more than enough economy to replace them. He's got to be worried about the counterattack, though. But if Minigun steps too far into creep, the horde of Zerg reinforcements could swarm over. Minigun intelligently backing up going to try to deploy that war prism yet again, but Itra's got very good defenses in the forms of spines and spores at every one of his bases. 92 harvesters now on the field for Idra with three more in production. The war prism trying to make its way to the top of the map. Idra on top of it, going to say, go away, war prism. I do not want to deal with you right now. Setting up creep on his entire side of the map. Minigun, though, that engagement went pretty well for him. I, I feel like he might be comfortable to start setting up a timing attack of his own, but does he have high tempos? Yes, there are high. Uh, there's only one high tempo. In he this lost a lot of high tempos oh. in the battle. Unfortunately, he actually sent them into the Zerg army, and then he had to more from the Archons that have been yes. taken out. So he wants to wait till he can replenish some of those high tempos. Of course, continuing on the upgrade pass. Both players are doing that. War Prism does get taken out at the top there. Idra multitasking very well. Minigun's looking to take a fifth base, but uh, I don't know if Idra is going to let him do that. Idra might want to wait for. He's trying to get these ultras out in the field, trying to finish up his upgrades. And he's got five Vipers, all with full energy. Those are going to be the key units in the coming battle. Minigun has no armor upgrades um, just yet, which is which is fairly interesting to know, considering Idra is approaching 3-3 three, three on his ground army. Idra wants to engage here coming over. There's the storm from the High Templars, melting away a lot of Hydra promotions. There goes the abduct onto the Colossi, taking those down in a matter of seconds is Idra. And again, Idra remaxing with Ultras right away. Minigun being very tentative here. Such a great trade for Idra there, just losing a couple of his basic units, taking out those two Colossi. He's still got to be careful, though, as that is a giant Protoss army. He's got to use the blinding cloud to keep the stalker DPS off. Idra trying there to set goes. up a There go the storms onto the Hydra promotions. Another abduct, abducting the mother support. There is no recall available now. Still lots of high templars with plenty of energy for the storm available. Minigun going to target down this fourth base. More and more ultras on the way here from Idra trying to clear up this uh, this army from Minigun, throwing down the blinding clouds. And Minigun's going to be on the run. He is. He got the hatchery, but he lost a lot of his key units in that battle. Idra is repopping ultra that's kept all his vipers alive. Lost a lot of roaches there, but I think he's happy to replenish those ultras. The question is, can he get on the attack now that Minigun's army? Yeah, it's almost maxed, but look at the composition. There's only one Colossus, only two High Templar. It's almost all Zealot Stalker. If Idra can strike once, as soon as his ultras pop, I think he can knock out that bottom right base before Minigun. Oh, wait, but Minigun's anticipating this. Mass cannons are being built to defend all of his bases, and he's Good. transitioning into a void raids. Of course, you did that counters Ultratus. 
very effectively. And now we have the situation where Idris economy is just fine, and now he has to try to discover, okay, what composition do I need to go for? Idris going for those ultras, they are very well upgraded, but as you said, uh, a void ray transition here from Minigun, a pretty perfect response to those ultras. However, the abduct happens. Ooh, taken out of Warpers, a nice pickoff. If you can abduct the, the void rays, though, into the Hydras, of course, that's very micro-intensive. Of course, you have to avoid the high Templar feedbacks. That could be a great way to get rid of those Voidrays. It definitely can. Idra looking to take out that bottom right base, knowing he does not want to let it, Miniga to get too much bank uncontested. Ultralist starting to crawl up the ramp, having a little bit of a hard time getting his army up the ramp, deciding he does not want to get caught in, a, in that little tiny choke with Templar coming all around him. Backs away, trying to find another spot to engage Miniga, and adding more Ultras into his army, adding a second Spire. We could see him potentially do an air transition later as he's got a lot of money banked up. Idra wants to engage, extending forward with the Ultras and the Hydra's Vipers. A little bit of the back row wants to dodge the High Templar feedback. Storm's going on onto this army. Time Warp as well. Storm's melting away. A lot of these units. There goes the abduct onto the Void Rays, trying to get them out of the battle. And now the Ultras coming forward. Blinding Cloud onto the Stalkers, preventing them from shooting at the Ultras. Idra is falling down in supply, though. Pretty crazy battle going on. More Blinding Clouds going on. Idra might just try to deny this fourth base and back up. Meanwhile, there is a counterattack in the top left left-hand side of the map. Uh, it looks like a Warpism drop there from Minigun, but Minigun continuing to surge forward to this fourth base, but it falls. Idra's gonna back away now. Uh, I think that was a brilliant engagement by Idra. Oh, he Idra out. lost his hatchery. He did, but there was many, many Zealots taken out there. He, his defenses are solid. He moved the drone Zealots to her. And look at what he did. He took out so many of Minigun's key units yet again. He took out one of Minigun's key mining bases. Sure, he lost one of his own, but I think he wants those trades. We can see here, Idra able to remax easily. Minigun is having money problems now. Yeah, Minigun very low in that bank, trying to add on Void Rays, High Templar, Immortals, very expensive units. You need as much economy as possible uh, to make that work. Still a 70 Harvester, so just needs to get this base up and he'll be a little bit more happy with his resources situation. Resources lost shows 16,000 to 14,000. Idra, a little bit more cost efficient in this game throughout, and he's adding on Investors, has Pathogen Glands on the way. And that's such a key figure. How often do you see Zergs be more cost efficient than the Protoss in these late game situations? It's all because of those Vipers. Blinding Clouds were extremely effective. The Abducts were brilliant. Idra, in the past, sometimes uh, we, we talked about, you know, these late game competitions. He's not able to handle himself that well. But this game, he is doing absolutely brilliantly. Two more Ultras in production, starting on that plus three melee attacks. Uh, upgrade should be fairly interesting to look at. Looks like uh, Minigun's still not getting any shield, uh, he's any, going, any armor upgrades. He's going over the air, that's yeah. why. He's, he's prioritizing the shield upgrades and the attack upgrades because, of course, attack upgrades are, are, are the most important for a ground army. Uh, the Immortals, Archons, Colossi uh, benefit so much. And then the shield upgrades help both the ground units and the air units. So he's definitely trying to look to prioritize those instead. Idra trying to look to find another engagement. He's sending the changing armies out to find out what Minigun's disposition is. Zell's gonna get taken out by the Stalkers, but here comes Idra with all of those Ultras, Hydras, and Infestors gonna try to engage Vipers in the back here. There go the Storms from Minigun. Great Storms hitting a lot of that army. The Colossus getting abducted back here from Idra. The Immortals getting bungled and Blinding Cloud rendering them absolutely useless. I think it's a good engage for Idra. He's up 168 to 140, but here come the Void Rays. Does Idra have a response to those? The Hydras getting melted away by the Charge Lots and the Archons. Idra is gonna leave the game. I, I actually have no idea why I left that game. He had so much money banked up. He, he took out a lot. I mean, Minigun still had, he had, like, he had no storm stuff at the end of the battle. He only had two Archons, a single Colossus, and some Void Rays. Uh, if Itcher just ran his Vipers away, I think he would have actually been, been doing great there. Uh, I, I mean, maybe, yeah, he was frustrated, but he was trading evenly. He was taking a top base. A very, a very interesting uh, situation. In fact, why don't we take a look at the, the mini, you know, what the game looked like at the end. I know, yeah, a lot of people are probably exactly wondering. What it looked like. Yeah, a lot of people are probably wondering, um, you know, what the exact situation was there at, at the end of that game. Um, your screen or mine? Okay, it looks like it's going to yours, which is fine. Yeah, so, so I mean, over here we have, of course, we can't see Idris' viewpoint because he's left the game, but he was taking this top base. Uh, you could go, you could hit the back button. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's just back you know. it up a tiny bit. And we can see exactly what's, uh, what's happening. So, Right here at this point, you're at his top base is pretty much done. Uh, he's he's being basically cost even with his opponent. He's slightly down to food, but look at this bank. Uh, he could easily catch up and make up that food difference with the base up. 
trading evenly. I mean, Minigun's third's about to vanish, which is going to put him on two bases, and he's going to have a very hard time taking a third, whereas Idra, uh, you know, his third will drop too, but he'll be mining off of three bases. If you're trading even blows to the opponent, exactly cost efficiently, uh, you're going to be in that situation where if you have the base up, you're going to win as the game goes on. He just got to... His competition was good. I liked it. It was a really great competition. His micro was great. Uh, I think he just got frustrated that he wasn't able to end the game. Like he 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 was playing so great, and I I can I know Idra uh, you know personally. I, I live with him. For yeah, a you were uh, for some context. You yeah. were. Go ahead. And I, I, I live I live with him in the in the EG house for for about half a year, a little more. And he's one of those guys who like if he's doing things right, he feels he should win the game. And I think what happened is he got frustrated that he hadn't won the game yet. And maybe he was afraid Minigun's uh, air transition would be too powerful as the game went on or something, but uh, I think that was a, a... I would even say he was winning that game. Maybe, I mean, maybe not by much. It was a very even game. Yeah. But I think he had the advantage, and I'm, I'm a little bit shocked to see him leave that. All right, potentially a, a controversial ending to, to game <laughs> number three there, but it, it results in Minigun taking the 3-0 victory over Evil Geniuses Idra. So, so congratulations to, to Roots Minigun. I know he's been practicing very hard. Uh, for this match in showing, he's been practicing a lot of Heart of the Storm, and he might be someone to fear at the Winter Championships, because he's going to be there, of course, it's March 15th. Unfortunately, uh, Idra from Evil Geniuses will not be attending the event. He is now knocked out of the Winter Season Showdowns. Um, so we, let's go ahead and show that, uh, that North American player card so we can do a little bit of a recap of what happened and see what is to come for the Winter Season Showdowns. Of course, Ghost User taking out Caliber 3-2 on Friday. And, of course, today, Idra falling to Minigun, 3-0. to zero. Uh, Very, very nice play there from Minigun. Of course, Idra, I, I thought he showed signs of brilliance in, in that third game. So, um, unfortunately, he will not be advancing on. Of course, coming up uh, over the week, we have Phoenix versus State. Vibe, Illusion, Suppy, Maker, Killer, QXE, Huck, and Sasquatch. Still plenty of amazing matches coming your way here in the Winter Season Showdowns. And now we see an update of the qualified players, another Protoss, another American being added on into the mix. We have two American flags there in that list and plenty of South Korean flags. That is right, a lot of powerhouse <laughs> Koreans. But in the coming days, we'll see some more Americans qualify or maybe Canadians or maybe Chileans or maybe Peruvians, but uh, people from the North and South American continents, that's the qualifiers coming up in the coming days. Absolutely. So guys, definitely stay tuned to the Winter Season Showdowns. Again, pretty much every single day at 5 p.m. Eastern, we'll be here casting these amazing Winter Season Showdown matches. Of course, closing out uh, this qualifier tournament with the North American region. So guys, stay tuned. Tomorrow will be Phoenix versus State. This has been uh, Minigun versus Israel. My name is Axel Toss. He's Axel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.